Good morning and welcome back to Professional Insights. Uh, today we want to talk about the fast-paced business environment and how crucial it is to stay ahead of the curve when it comes to retirement planning. And that's why we are thrilled to have Rob Jacobs on the show this morning to share his insights on cash balance retirement plans, from funding requirements to regulatory. We'll cover it all. But before we do, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you get all the updates for all these interviews. We're here every Tuesday morning. Uh, so with that said, let's get started. Good morning, Rob. How are you? Hey, good, Mike. How are you doing, sir? Doing good, buddy. It's been a long time, man. It has. It has. So, hey, let's jump into this. Um, and we're just kind of kind of let this thing go where it goes. And But the first question that I've always wanted to know, which you've explained a long time ago, but what is a cash balance retirement plan? Now, that's a good question. So it, it helps to maybe, maybe step back a little bit and talk about some other kinds of plans and then talk about where cash balance plans fit into that, that environment. So everyone's heard of the 401k plan, right? Most Absolutely. common retirement plan. Um, it has IRS benefits, tax benefits to it. Um, it, it's the most common type of what's called a defined contribution plan. All right. Okay. So in, in the retirement planning world, there are two different kinds of plans. You've got your defined contribution plans, which is 401k and some other options, and you have defined benefit plans, um, which most people think of as like pension plans, right? So especially older people um you know are very familiar with pension plans they're not as common anymore but there's some really cool benefits to pension plans um so again you got these two different kinds of of types of plans and the cash balance plan kind of dances in both worlds which is which is really cool so it's called it, it's called a hybrid plan often because it has some really great benefits of the defined benefit plan which means larger tax deductions and larger contributions. And it also has benefits of the defined contribution plans, which is increased flexibility and portability. And, and portability just means that when you leave the company, you can take the money from your cash balance plan, you can roll it into an IRA. So these cash balance plans kind of play in those two worlds. And that that's why they're so cool is they have the massive tax deductions and still all the other IRS benefits that come with normal retirement plans. So Rob, we've got these two plans, right? Four, and let's just stick to the 401k because like you mentioned, pension plans are kind of non-existent these days. But if we've, if we've got 401k plans, what are some of the key considerations for business owners to incorporate a cash balance plan or do they do both? I mean, how does that work? Yeah, good, good question. So cash balance plans are almost always used in conjunction with a 401k plan. So um, a 401k plan works for virtually every company, whether you're an, an individual, you know, a solopreneur, whether you run a big organization, wh whatever you're doing, a 401k generally works. Um, not a lot of reasons they don't work. Cash balance plans pretty different. A cash balance plan really works with with high profit businesses. So, so what what is that? What does that look like? So it, it it means that one or more owners are making pretty good incomes, meaning probably two hundred fifty thousand or higher. Um, so, so most of my clients that use cash balance plans make probably 500,000 or higher. Yep. And, and the reason that's the case is the main benefit of the cash balance plan is the tax savings, the tax deduction. All right. So if, if someone's bringing in, you know, 600,000, they're in, you know, a, a tax bracket with, with state, you're in the 40 to 45% tax range. And so if you're bringing in $600,000, you, you would love to get a tax deduction of 40%. In a 401k, you can only get a tax deduction up to about 70,000. So if, if you've got a $600,000 income, 70,000 is, is kind of helpful, but it really doesn't reduce your income that much. So Rob, let's, let's dig into that a little bit, right? So you've got the, 
payroll contributions of a 401k and in, in that example, 70,000. So if an owner is making, let's just call it 500,000, are the contributions the same to the cash balance plan as they are to the 401k, meaning he, you elect to take 6%, 10% of your income and put it into the cash balance plan? No, it's actually totally different. So, so the okay. 401k, you're maxed out at around 70,000. Okay. On a cash balance plan, um, the, the maximum contribution is based on two factors, based on age and salary, I I income, right? Okay. So if someone's bringing a good income and they're say, you know, 55 years old, your contribution to a cash balance plan is going to be about, you know, $350,000. So you can put 70,000 in your 401k plan and an additional, you know, 350,000 give or take into a cash balance plan that actually has a sizable tax benefit, right? Right. But that also takes away from the owner's actual take home income, does it not? For, 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 absolutely. For sure. Right. So, 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 so this is a situation in which the business owner or owners say, okay, I have enough income. I've got a spouse who brings in money. I've got other savings. I bring, I've, I, I have a lot of surgeons that, that have cash balance plans and they bring in a lot of money and, and, and they really can afford to put away three or 400,000 a year and still have plenty to live on. So it, it's really for somebody who wants to put away more than the 70,000 limit for a 401k. Gotcha. Okay. And then, so what are, what are those funding requirements? I mean, you talked a little bit about it, but how do you determine what that those that funding requirement for a cash balance plan is? Yeah, good question. So um, it, it's different than a 401k. The basic way it works is you, you set up a plan um, that says, I would like to put the maximum amount into a cash balance plan by the time I retire. And the maximum amount is about three and a half million dollars. Okay? okay. And so because, because your company has decided to do that, um, and let's say you've got an owner who's 55 and they're going to retire at age 62. So in order to put in the maximum $3.5 million in seven years, they've got to put away massive chunks of money, or at least I should say they're allowed to put in massive chunks of money in order to meet that obligation. And so they can put in, you know, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 every single year in order to meet the obligation that's specified by this cash balance plan agreement. And, and of course, they're the ones that chose to do it. And but what is that? Is that, is, that a, is, is the age based off of regulations or do they determine what year they want to retire? They determine the year they want to retire. So you choose the year you want to retire and then you put in chunks of money um, based on that. Most people okay. choose, I, I think, 62 is, is what I typically see. But yeah it depends on on those two factors and and because of that you can put in these massive chunks that you can't do in a 401k so 401k is not really age dependent at all other than of course the catch-up contribution but generally that's just a kind of a, a cap whereas the cash balance plan age is a huge factor so older high profit business owners can put away hundreds of thousands of dollars every single year now, just something that came up in my head here when you mentioned that with a 401k, as long as you're working, you're not subject to re the uh, minimum distributions, right? Correct. Are cash balance plans set up the same way? Um, correct. So you don't, you don't have to pull out you know, any RMDs um, okay. until you get to that age. Um, most people, of course, have, have left employment by then. Um, but if you haven't, yeah, you can keep putting money in um, the cash balance plan they become less beneficial, you know, the, the, the amount you can put in decreases after you reach this retirement age. Um, so it's still beneficial, but but the real benefit is up until, you know, 65, 68. Okay. And, then, and, and, and then normal types of things happen. You can roll them into an IRA, RMDs are required, all those normal types of things apply because these are IRS qualified plans just like a 401k. So with that, a lot of 401ks are, are somewhat restricted in terms of the investments that you can put into within the, the 401k. Right. What types of investments are typically used within the cash balance plan? 
So let's talk about the difference between the two plans. So a 401k plan is called a participant directed plan, meaning okay. the participant, the, the employee is the one that decides how they want to invest it and they can invest in whatever they want, right? So we're all familiar with a 401k, you've got you know 15 or 20 options and each employee chooses how they want to invest their money. Whatever yeah. they want to do is fine. Um, a cash balance plan is completely different. It, it's an employer driven plan, which means you have a single um, investment for the entire company, all right? And so typically an investment advisor is the one who manages that. Um, and so you, you uh, me, I, I would I would make investments for an entire company, um, but it's really driven totally differently in that in a 401k, your goal is to make the maximum return over time, right? Of that, course. That's the way you work. It, it's different in a cash balance plan. Cash balance plan, um, the plan document actually says that we are going, our company is going to provide a certain interest credit to employees and owners who belong to the plan every single year. So it's, it's not dependent upon the investment in the plan. So you may, for example, say, okay, in this plan, we are going to make contributions to the plan. In addition to that, we're going to provide a 5% interest credit to every one who belongs to the plan. So independent of, of growth in the plan, every person in the plan gets a 5% growth every single year. So it's really cool that you have a very well-defined growth plan for these, for these investments. And so segueing back, in, back into your question, so because we're trying to hit that targeted interest credit rate, the investments that I choose are intended to hit a target rate. I'm not trying to maximize someone's return. I'm trying to hit that 5% or whatever that percentage is for that, for that company. Um, okay. and, and the reason being that if I, if I make much more than that, that reduces the contribution that the company can make the next year um, because they're over contributed. If I make less than that, then they have to put in more money in order to make up for that difference. So my job mm -hmm. as an advisor is to make sure we kind of hit that 5% using whatever investments are appropriate. So you can't, you can't say 3%, right? I mean, not you that you can. want to put a 3% credit, you, but you then can't. you, you can't do a 10% either. Cause I mean, you're kind of, the, the plan would be out of balance, would it not? Um, no, so if, if you can choose whatever whatever number you want. So if you want to choose 10%, you can. The difficulty with choosing 10% is it's hard to make a consistent 10% return. True. So if I'm shooting for 10%, I'm probably having a lot more stocks and a lot less, a lot fewer fixed income, you know, stable types of investments, which means I'm probably not going to hit 10%. I'm probably going to hit 14% some years and minus 4% some years yep. and be kind of all over the map. So generally ranges are between, you know, four to 6% um, to, for that interest credit rate. And then you mentioned, as you went through that process, Rob, you, you mentioned people that are participating in the plan. Does, is everybody eligible to participate in a cash balance plan, like a 401k plan? Great question. So it depends what the company does. So the company can choose to let everybody in, but that seldom happens. So what happens in a 401k is everyone pretty much is eligible, right? There are requirements, of course, age and, um, you know, number of hours you work, but in general, most people are eligible in a, in a cash balance plan. Um, it, it's very different. Only, only 40% of employees, including owners, are eligible up to a maximum of 50. So let's say you have you know, 20 owners plus employees. You have, say, you know, four owners, 16 employees. That means that plan um, only has to have eight people covered. So if you pick the four owners as part of the plan, you then take four additional employees and generally employers pick the employees who are youngest with the lowest salaries. 
re the oh, so reason it's not, being it's not necessarily it's, it's not necessarily key employees no no it, it can be so i have a lot of a lot of companies who do choose key employees but i also have a lot of companies that say okay the owners we're making a lot of money we'd like to put chunks of money away have massive tax savings and yep. pay as little as possible to employees and you can do that you, you can totally do that so um it, it, it's a fabulous plan for owners who want to benefit themselves and any employees they choose it's great for recruiting and retaining employees because you can target exactly who gets the benefit so who's making the contribution? Is it solely the employee or is it similar to a 401k where there's a match? It's solely the employer. So the company, oh, solely the employer, solely the employer. That's the only one that makes a contribution. No, no employee ever makes a contribution. So then if, if I'm an employee, you're my employer, you're making contributions. Is there a vesting schedule? Like if I take off in a year, do I take that money with me or do, do you retain it? Good question. So typically it's a three year um, click okay. schedule. And what that means is um, if someone works there for two and a half years, they get nothing. Gotcha. If someone works there for three years in one day, they get all the company contributions. Cause that kind of scared me for a second, Rob. I'm like, <laughs> as an employer, like I'm, and I understand, right? That's, I want to contribute at some level, Yeah. but all of a sudden you take off and I, you just walked off with a hundred grand. And you're only there for a certain amount of time. That would be true. Really, that would be good. The fact is, most times the employees who are in these plans are are not key employees. Most times, and, and honestly, I've seen lots of situations in which you'll have a few business owners that are putting in, you know, two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand a year, and they'll split like three thousand dollars among six other employees total. And so the, the contributions to other employees can be very small. And so vesting is certainly a factor, but not a big deal most of the time because other employees get very little if, if, if the owners choose to do it that way. So Rob, let's dig into that part of it, right? Because I've, I've, I found this very interesting when you first described this to me, is that 401ks are subject to testing. So an owner can't overfund it because it, there's rules to this right but if i'm hearing you correctly the owners of a cash balance plan can completely overfund it and there is no subject it's not subject to testing is is that correct no it's definitely subject to testing but the bottom line is the contribution amounts are so large that someone dropping in four hundred thousand dollars isn't overfunding it that okay. that can be a very normal amount so so the, the, the way the calculations work is kind of interesting so every year what happens is we'll give all the information, all the census information about the company. So employees, how much they make, how old they are, all that kind of stuff. We'll look at the retirement plan. So it's gonna be a combination of 401k and cash balance. We'll put all that information together. We'll give it to an actuary. And the actuary then looks at all the IRS tables, all the information about the plan and comes back and says, okay, employer this year, you're allowed to make these contributions. You can make, you can make a certain limit of contributions and because of your past, because of how much money you put in, because of how much money it's, it's how, how much it's grown, you're allowed to put in this range. And, and for, you know, for a company they may say, okay, you can put in between, you know, 350,000 and 420,000 this year or, or, or whatever. So the actuary decides based on kind of complex calculations, how much you're allowed to put in to not be over or underfunded and still pass all the compliance requirements that the IRS and Department of Labor do require. So what are, what are some of the other limitations and drawbacks to a cash balance retirement plan? Um, I, I think one big one is consistent contributions. And so if, if some if some employer has a windfall, you know, for a year or two and they have a ton of money coming in and they say, hey, man, we are making so much money right now because of, let's say COVID, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of companies made a ton of money for a year or two after COVID. Um, and, and they're like, man, we're paying such crazy taxes. Let's open a cash balance plan 
and let's stick in, you know, 400,000 for each of the owners. Well, that works great until COVID, you know, income dries up and they come back to their normal income and they're like, well, we don't have money to make any contributions. Oh. And, 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 and these plans are different. The, these plans are intended to be consistent. The IRS wants to see consistent contributions. It doesn't mean it has to be the same every year, but it, but, but it doesn't mean you can put in 400,000, then 400,000, then zero, zero, zero. It doesn't really work that way. So, so what happens? Does, do you, does the money return? Does it go, does it get converted to a 401k or an IRA? Or, I mean, what happens in that situation? So it, in that situation, you would, you would look at the plan and, and if you, if, if the employer said, look, we're really not going to have enough income for, you know, for the foreseeable future to make contributions, we, we would probably freeze the plan so that there are ways you can, you can work around those items. But in general, we, we, we like to see contributions for at least three years, um, bare minimum, if not, if not more. So again, windfall one or two years, probably not going to be the right fit. IRS may get a little, a little angsty about you not making contributions. So that, that, that's one of the limitations is you got to be consistent. Fair enough. And Rob, as we close up right now, can, I mean, just as a real, I mean, we've talked about a lot, you've talked about physicians, high income earners, et cetera. Can you share without obviously disclosing client information, of course, and giving tax advice because neither one of us are CPAs. Can you share some real world real world examples of how you implemented this and what what they look like? Yeah, for sure. I, I've got I've got loads, probably more than you want to hear. I'll, I'll give you a couple. So huh. one situation, um, I've got a, a, an older lady um, who has made enough income over the years to survive and, and do okay, but but recently, like the last three or four years. Um, her product has become very valuable. Mm -hmm. um, and I won't, I won't share the details, um, but, but her products become very valuable and she's making crazy money right now. So. But she has no savings. She doesn't have a dime to her name. At, well, she, she does now, but she didn't have any money saved at all. And so she's making large sums of money, well over a million dollars a year, um, but she's older. She, she's, she's well into her 60s wants to retire in just a few years and she doesn't have a dime. And so with her, we set up a cash balance plan and a 401k plan and she's dropping the maximum in. So when, when you drop in, you know, 400,000 a year, it doesn't take very many years to do that, to actually have a decent retirement. Yeah. And so honestly, if she had a 401k only, she would never be able to retire. Um, you know, she'd be paying massive taxes. She'd be in the 40% you know, plus state bracket, she would be crushed. And this lets her put in 400,000, all tax deductible and save for the future. So it, it is ideal for her. So another situation, um, you know, sur surgeon group, I talked about, um, you know, some of those and, and, you know, these, these surgeons make pretty crazy money. Yeah. But they're in really high tax brackets and they're, that they're, they're, they're dropping, you know, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars in taxes every single year. And that that's a lot of money. And it's not like they don't have money, but who wants to pay six hundred thousand in taxes every year? So so these surgeons can drop in again, you know, three, three hundred and fifty thousand a year, and it cuts their taxes by one hundred and fifty thousand, which is huge. That that's a lot of money. And and they can they can help their employees, they can grow their company. Their employees never leave because they're giving them contributions yeah. in the 401k and now a cash balance plan. So there's some really great opportunities for owners to save taxes and accelerate growth for the future. And I'll tell you, this is the plug for there's no such thing as a tax loophole. It's called tax planning. <laughs> it is exactly right. <laughs> so Rob, look, I, I always appreciate you being available for not only for these interviews, but also for clients. Um, and the education that you put out on social media. Uh, you can connect with Rob on LinkedIn. His information is below. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you have any questions about future interviews, leave those down there. Please like and subscribe. Rob, thank you for your time. I appreciate you being here. You got it, Mike. Thanks, sir.